Okay guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, we learned how to handle an exception and specifically we did a product not found exception. But the problem is, is that it lived on the controller, which is not only messy, but it's not very robust either. So in this video, we're going to move it to a global exception handler and make our entire system a little more robust and easier to implement new features. So in our exceptions folder, file new java class i'm going to name it global exception handler and what makes this work is we're going to annotate it with at controller advice this annotation will catch all of the exceptions thrown by all of the controllers across the entire system so going back to our product controller I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to move it to our global exception handler. Now that it's in this class, it'll work the exact same way. It'll give us the exact same response, and we can add more exceptions. So if we had another exception, we could come down here and we could add another exception handler to handle that specific exception. Let's make sure this is still working. So I go over to my get product endpoint. I know that I do not have an ID of 10 in the repository. So I click send. And we still get a product not found, just like we expected. However, this is still in the format of a string. And we want this to be returned in the form of a JSON. That way, it's more usable for the UI and it's more adaptable. So if we want to add properties later, we can. So let's do that now. So instead of the body being a simple string, we need to pass in a Java object. So I'm going to in our exceptions folder, I'm going to do new Java class. I'm going to call it simple response. going to have one field private string message I'm going to annotate it with at data so we don't have to generate our getters and setters and we're going to do all args constructor so in one line of code we can pass it in and create the object so our body is going to be a new simple response and we're going to pass in the string of product not found and we need to change our return type from string to simple response and that should do it let's rerun and check okay making our way over to postman i'm going to run it again and we get product not found but instead we get it in a JSON with message and some curly braces. Excellent. So later on, if we decide that we want to have more in our error message, we could always come in here, add some more properties or change the structure entirely. Okay, so our application is really starting to mature. We're returning JSON, we're returning message we've got product not found exceptions being thrown we're sending it back to the ui this is really starting to look good however one disadvantage of having it in this format is that for every different type of exception we would have to come down here and do at exception handler write a new method etc and you can imagine that in the span of an entire application, you're going to have so many different exceptions. And so perhaps there is a way to bundle a sum of the exceptions and group them together so that we don't have to write so much code. And I'm going to show you one way to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new exception and it's going to be a basic exception. And all of the simple exceptions that are just going to return a simple message, they are going to inherit from it, and we're just going to pass in the string, and then it will handle the rest of it on its own. So, in our exceptions folder, 
we're going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call it custom base exception. Now, if we remember, our product not found exception extended the runtime exception. So that's what our custom base exception is going to do. It's going to be the closest to the pure runtime exception of any other class. So this is going to extend runtime exception. And we're going to change our product not found exception to extend custom base exception, which will in turn extend the runtime exception. So instead, our product not found exception will extend custom base exception. Now our custom base exception is going to have two parameters, private HTTP status, status, and private simple response, simple response. And we're going to generate a constructor. And don't forget to annotate it with at data for our getters and setters. Moving back to our global exception handler, we are now going to pass in the exception that is thrown. So custom base exception, exception. And instead of having a static not found, we're going to pass in the one that is thrown. So exception dot get status and the body is going to be exception that is thrown dot get simple response so we are almost done with this part let's go back to our product not found exception and modify so it now extends our custom base exception great but now we have an error and we need to create a constructor using the super. So there we are, product not found exception. However, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, we're not going to pass in our status or our simple response because for a product not found exception, we want it to return the same status and the same response every time. So we don't need this. And for super, we're going to have HTTP status dot bad request and a new simple response with the string of product not found. Okay, let's test it out. And making our way over to Postman. It is still working. Message product not found. Great. Now to really see the benefit of doing it like this, let's quickly add error handling for the create product command handler. So in a previous video, we looked at this command handler. This is creating a new product but we want to validate the product and make sure that the data we're passing in isn't crappy. And so at the time, all we did was throw a new runtime exception, which doesn't send anything good back to the user. So when we validate the product, what we want to do is throw a, say, product not valid exception. But we want to have a different error message every single time because we want to tell the user exactly what went wrong. So this is the power of doing it in this way. So let's do file, new, Java class, product not valid exception. It's going to extend our custom base exception that we just wrote. Let's go ahead and create our constructor. And we already know that what the status is going to be, so we're not going to pass in the status. And we want to pass in a string. So string message. 
This is the message we're going to pass in at the command handler level. So our status is going to be HTTP status dot bad request. And then we're going to generate a new simple response with the message. Okay, so product not valid exception coming over to our command handler. I'm going to replace runtime exception with product not valid exception and import. Same thing down here and same thing down here. Oh, and we have one more. I'm going to go ahead and update this to say product description cannot be empty. Product price cannot be empty. And product quantity cannot be empty. OK, let's run it and see what happens. So I'm moving over to Postman. I am on the create product endpoint. And here I have a name of null and everything else is valid. So if I click send, I get a product name cannot be empty. Great. Let's go ahead and put in a name. And let's remove description. Click send. Product description cannot be empty. Perfect. It tells me exactly what the issue is. Let's have a negative price. Product price cannot be negative. Great. And then quantity will also put this negative. Product quantity cannot be negative. Perfect. So in just two minutes, we were able to get custom validation for every single one of these if statements. And we only had to throw a single product not valid exception. And it all gets thrown up through the custom base exception. It builds it for us. And then the global exception handler handles the exception and returns our response entity using the parameters that we pass in. Now, this is really up to you on how you want to handle this. You could do a custom base exception and a bunch of simple error messages get thrown with only a single parameter. Or depending on the situation, you might want to come in here and do exception handler and have a product not valid exception uh, handled in a slightly different way or a combination of the both. So this is exception handling in Java Spring Boot. We went from the most simple to a fairly complex and robust system. Thank you.